The text provides a history of the Pentecostalism movement, including its origins and beliefs. It discusses founder Charles Fox Parham and his teachings, as well as the controversy surrounding the movement. The author expresses opposition to Pentecostalism and its leaders, citing concerns about their teachings and impact. The text emphasizes the importance of sound doctrinal instruction and living holy lives. Ultimately, it encourages seeking a deep understanding of God and following truthful teachings of the Bible. Pentecostalism, who founded this movement, and when did it start? It's critical to comprehend Pentecostalism's past. It is a movement that has split off into numerous distinct denominations. The start of this movement was in the year 1900s. Charles Fox Parham was its founder. He is regarded as the founding father of contemporary Pentecostalism. He said that in the late 1800s, while serving as a Methodist church pastor, he started to receive direct revelation from God. He was an odd man with an odd assortment of doctrines. He rejected the idea of an endless damnation. He thought that Israel included England and the white race. He received the notion that the early apostolic gifts bestowed upon the apostles and other believers at Pentecost, as described in Acts 224, would be restored by God. The gift of tongues, the gift of prophecy, and the power of physical healing. During the early days of Christianity, these gifts were a type of signed miracle that were given to the apostolic church for a specific use and a brief period of time. 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Does God still heal people today? Absolutely. Does he still speak to his elect? Yes, through the inspiration of scripture, but not some new revelation. A new word from folks who say, thus says the Lord. You better be 100% sure it is the same Lord who spoke to Moses in the burning bush that is speaking through the modern day prophet. Therefore, what are currently being marketed as the New Testament gifts of prophecy, healing and tongues are actually counterfeits. One of the numerous clergymen impacted by the Montanus and Holiness movements was Charles Fox Parham, who felt that the church required a fresh infusion of the Holy Spirit. The church opposed these two movements. Charles Fox Parham aspired to bring back Montanism, the late second to century Montanus movement. The Methodist church rejected his revelations and alternative beliefs. Montanus was a person. Prior to becoming a Christian, he served as an Apollo priest for the heathen god. It is said that when they worshipped Apollo, they would become ecstatic and slip into a trance, speaking incoherently in an unidentified tongue. They thought that by uttering the exact words of their pagan god, Apollo, they were prophesying. Two of Montanus's female co-workers, Maximilla and Prisca, often called Priscilla, were also converted Christians and professed to have received inspiration from the Holy Spirit. In order for their followers to communicate these discoveries, the three instructed them to fast and pray while speaking in an exuberant tongue. The new prophecy, Montanism, caused division among the Christian groups at the time. For his belief in fresh prophetic revelations, Montanus was declared a heretic by the Christian church. Despite being rejected by the early Christian church, this movement managed to endure due to its widespread appeal for two generations before it was ultimately suppressed. We would not see this movement again until the year 1900s, a span of 1600 years. Charles's new prophetic movement, Pentecostalism, was rejected by the old churches of Methodists and Presbyterians. Regretfully, nevertheless, it became well known and is a prominent movement to this day. Today's Pentecostalism is grounded in Montanism. Charles Fox thought that the gifts of healing, speaking in tongues, and prophecy were abrupt returns of the early apostolic gifts. 
At one of Charles Fox's services in 1900s, a woman named Agnes Osman became the first person to speak in an unknown tongue in our modern day. You can read more about this and research her. Charles Fox claimed to get fresh revelations from God and that God intended to disclose his new words through him, which was one of the reasons the Methodist Church rejected him. This is what many self-styled contemporary prophets in many Pentecostal congregations now do. The early church held the view that God had already revealed himself to humanity in his son Jesus Christ, and that no one could add to it, and that God will remove a person's portion from the book of life, the holy city, and the things that are written in it if they add to or subtract from the words found in his book, Revelation 22. Charles Fox quit the Methodist Church to found his own after the church rejected this. I therefore find it impossible to align myself with a movement whose founders were rejected by the established church, due to the way history and documentation support them. To launch his movement, Charles Fox worked outside the bounds of the church and the Bible. Is it possible for members of Pentecostal churches to enter heaven? I will say this. God brings salvation by the accurate teaching of his word. Accurate interpretation of the Bible is necessary to arrive at a saving knowledge of God and what Jesus Christ accomplished for us on the cross. The majority of Pentecostal congregations have repeatedly demonstrated that they have erroneous Bible interpretations. God is misrepresented when the Bible is read incorrectly. What are the effects of this kind of instruction? Jesus speaks to lawyers here in Luke 11. These lawyers were Mosaic law instructors and interpreters. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. One should think about searching for a genuine Bible teaching church in light of Luke's caution, Charles Fox Parham's teachings, and the contemporary Pentecostal movement. I oppose movements such as this because I think the blessings and glory of God will not pass through false doctrine or a heart full of impurities, just as it will not pass through a believer in a gospel teaching church who cling to carnal things that harbor impurities. His glory is therefore severely constrained. That person won't be used by God in the manner that he would like. God has the capacity to utilize every one of us powerfully. God however, will always act according to his law and the power of his word. The actions of Pentecostal leaders such as Benny Hinn, Rodney Parsley, Kenneth E. Hagan, Kenneth Copeland, Paula White, Joseph Prince, T.D., Jakes, Paul Andamp, Jan Crouch, and Creflo Dollar, I think cause a lot of people to walk away from God. They end up becoming a barrier for those trying to enter God's kingdom. God's message has the power to save, and those types of churches lack this. Your desire to be utilized by God for his glory is contingent upon receiving sound doctrinal exegetical instruction. I believe that you will impede God's glory in your life if you surround yourself with things that are more about the body, emotionalism, and amusement than they are about the spirit. God has commanded us to live holy lives apart from the world, and against the wants of our flesh. Something that every one of us must do in order to be effectively utilized. This is made possible by understanding who he is. Our desire to emulate Jesus Christ grows as we learn more about him via the truthful teaching of his word. This is the reason I think it's so important to attend a church that correctly interprets the Bible. Not only teach it, but also put it on display. The movement that gave rise to modern Pentecostalism has pagan origins. It is our responsibility as believers to develop and mature in Christ Jesus. In Philippians 2, 12 Paul explains that it was because of what Christ did for us that we should always obey the calling of the Lord to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Paul further explains that it is God that works in us both to create in us the desire and the strength to do it because it pleases God. It is our responsibility to obey Jesus. Here, obedience refers to submission. In an institution such to Charles Fox Parham, 
How may a person deepen their understanding of God? I understand that this may irritate some individuals. I act from the heart and with conviction. God bless you. Michael Garcia